The late, great Joan Rivers was best known as the Queen of Comedy. One of the world's most successful comedians from the 1960s onward, Joan was widely recognized for her in-your-face stand-up sets and her politically incorrect sense of humor. She was also the author of a dozen books, appeared in multiple films, and designed her own jewelry alongside a host of other business pursuits throughout her 55-year career. Right up until her death, Joan Rivers lived in a stunning palace on Manhattan's Upper East Side. A penthouse suite in the sky that others have called a little piece of Versailles in New York City. Joan's longtime apartment is located inside one of New York's last remaining Gilded Age mansions, constructed for John R. Drexel, the heir of a powerful banking family from Philadelphia. Over the course of its history, the building would change hands, then in the 1930s, it became an exclusive apartment house with nine units. It would stay like that until the 1980s. Then a year after her husband Edgar Rosenberg's death in 1987, she sold their home in LA and returned to New York State, purchasing this penthouse. Joan immediately began decorating the home with decor that spoke to the French themed architecture. In fact, Joan was once quoted as describing her condo as where Marie Antoinette would have lived if she had money. Joan fell in love with the home's neo-French classic style. And over the decades, she preserved the unit's ornate details. Details, including the paneled library, formal dining room, and several wood burning fireplaces. With four bedrooms, five bathrooms, and two large entertainment spaces capable of holding 125 people at once, you can imagine the parties Joan used to throw here back in the day. Galas and events that were sometimes attended by dignitaries as famous as Princess Diana. As soon as you step foot off the unit's private elevator, you'll discover a two story gallery which adjoins a light-filled living room, each of which includes an original fireplace. Joan's Louis XIV inspired entertaining rooms feature a former ballroom and music room, which boasts 23-foot ceilings alongside some gorgeous antique columns and an elegant parquet of Versailles floor. Past the elegant gathering rooms with their ample amount of space is a corner paneled library that attached to a formal dining room boasting 18th century French panels. South-facing terraces flood the entire unit with sunlight during the day, and Joan's master suite overlooks Central Park along with the rest of the New York City skyline. Then there are the bathrooms, which feature marble tubs and countertops, as well as golden accents accompanied by elegant curtains and light. Considering the level of opulence on display, is it any wonder Joan would spend the final 28 years of her life living here? According to a quote from her real estate agent, Dolly Lenz, Rivers was contemplating selling this unit and moving to the West Coast to be closer to her daughter Melissa. Joan would never get the chance to do so as she died following complications from a botched surgery in 2014. After her death, the home was listed for $28 million and sold to Prince Muhammad bin Fahd, who decided to instill some changes of his own. A few months after buying the place, contractors and designers were hired to freshen it up, something that originally upset Joan's former neighbors, one of whom told the Daily Mail, he is ripping it to shreds. Everyone is surprised because the place had a certain French look. It was very specific and one would think the buyer would be into that. And now he doesn't want that. When the home was unveiled in 2022, I gotta be honest, it didn't look that different. More like a modern update suited for contemporary taste. If anything, this updated decor feels a bit ritzier. The colors all pop a bit more and everything has a slightly more elegant sense to it. But I mean, it could always be because these images were captured with a higher definition camera. Today, you can find this home still on the market and it's being offered for $34.5 million, about four million less than the original listing from last year. Perhaps if you keep holding out, the price tag will drop a bit more, but with a place this magnificent, I wouldn't expect it to last forever. But there's also another reason why maybe it hasn't sold yet. The entire time Joan lived here, she was under the belief that the place was haunted. As much as Joan Rivers loved her one of a kind home with its Central Park views, the apartment had one thing she didn't love. A ghost in the form of a woman who she believed to have been the unit's former tenant named Mrs. Spencer. Joan famously appeared on Celebrity Ghost Stories in 2009 to discuss the spirit that had been haunting her for years. Joan was under the impression that Mrs. Spencer hated her because of the renovations that Joan had undertaken soon after moving in. Mrs. Spencer
Spencer originally began manifesting herself as a chill through the apartment. Joan could also never quite seem to get her electrical appliances to work either. Even her dog refused to settle and was anxious all the time. Then Joan discovered that all the heads of the cherubs hanging on her chandelier had been bitten off. Considering the ceilings in that room are over 20 feet high, what else could have possibly done that than a ghost? Riffers wasn't the only one to experience this phantom either. According to lore, whenever Joan would hire musicians to play on the upper balcony of her entertaining room, they would sometimes see Miss Spencer up there with them. Joan eventually decided to exercise her home. She engaged the services of a voodoo priestess from Louisiana who banished Mrs. Spencer. Soon after, Joan noticed an improvement in the energy of her home. Even her dog began to get comfy, but it didn't last. The disruptions began again, and Joan didn't know what to do. Hoping to keep the old lady appeased, she happened upon an old painting of Mrs. Spencer in the basement of her building and hung it up in the hallway of her home with a vase of flowers underneath it. When the voodoo priestess got back in touch, she told Joan that Mrs. Spencer had been pleased by this display of affection and from that point forward, Joan and her ghost were able to peacefully coexist until River's passing. Having spent so much of her later life living out of New York City, there's one last home we're gonna show you that Joan built specifically for herself back when she was still married in the 1980s. Located in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, this 12,000 square foot home with seven bedrooms and eight baths includes the Hollywood amenities you'd never find in that part of the country, including an indoor swimming pool, a jacuzzi, and a 2,000 square foot master suite, all of which is situated on a 10 acre plot of land. This home was originally constructed by Thomas Pileggi, a friend and real estate partner of Jones, who teamed up with her and her husband to invest $19 million dollars in townhouse developments, an industrial park, and shopping centers all around the county. Joan's home was situated in the community known as Two Ponds, an 87-acre development that Thomas was hoping to turn into a little Beverly Hills. Initially, the plan was to offer single-family houses on 10-acre plots with an asking price of around $300,000 each. But by the early 80s, plans had changed to include 300 condominiums, a 30,000 square foot movie studio, a golf course, a spa, and other luxuries. The Northampton Township Board of Supervisors rejected this new proposal, which Rivers didn't take well, telling the Inquirer, I love Bucks County and its people. I have a strong desire to come east and work and live in the clean and beautiful place, and then to be spit in the face is cruel. Zoning laws only allowed houses to be constructed on one acre, which ruled out condos. What's more, commercial activity like a movie studio wasn't allowed in the area. So Joan changed tactics and came up with a new plan to secede from Northampton Township. In 1983, Rivers filed a petition in Common Pleas Court to establish the borough of Two Ponds as its own locality, complete with its own government, police, and zoning law. While Rivers was excited at the prospect of creating her own community, opposition to the idea won out, leading her and her husband reverting to their original idea of building single-family houses in the area. Their house was still under construction in August 1987 when Joan's husband Edgar died in his hotel room at the Four Seasons in nearby Philadelphia. He was suffering from health issues and it's believed he overdosed on prescription drugs at the age of just 63. Following this sad turn of events, the house took several more months to complete and was later sold to the owner who has now listed it again recently. So if you ever wanted to know what it feels like to be Joan Rivers and you've got a little over two million dollars to spend, then head on over to Bucks County and check out the mansion she personally designed but never wound up living in. All right, folks, that'll bring this latest house tour to a close. Thank you so much for joining me. And before you head out, consider answering the following question. If you could bring the glitz and glamour of living in Hollywood to anywhere else in rural America, where would it be? Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss an episode. My name's Kara the Vampire Slayer, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye.